Hey you guys, welcome back to day seven, which is we will be talking about God. Um the topic is God. Um I wanna thank everybody that continues to come in, drop in and look, listen, you know, help me uh escape for 30 minutes um first off i want to say that i had two shakes today i got one more i'm gonna um drink for dinner but i'm working on my fourth bottle of water and i did my exercise this morning i'm kind of in pain in my stomach area um i was gonna work out from for like five days a week but after today i'm gonna work out for three that three times a week monday wednesday and friday and then i'm gonna do yoga for three times a week the alternate days and have sunday off so hopefully by the end of this fast I have I should have lost some weight if not if you know a doctor please help me I just want to know what's going on with my stomach I haven't gotten any answers that I feel like um, put all my problems into one diagnosis so at the end of this fast if you know my stomach is still protruding. I ask anybody that's in the medical field, can you please help me? Also, I want to shout out Soul Pass. Um, she, I ordered this uh, shea butter off her online store, and it feels so good on my skin we have me all silky and shiny and smooth if y'all want to see what it look like hold on two seconds i'll be right back okay i'm back if you follow me on my instagram then you probably see me take a picture with this Yeah, Shea Butter Soup Flight. This is so nice. I love it. I've been using it every day since I got it. My skin feel back like how it used to. Because lately it's just been so dry. And I'm also still continuing this book. You all see it? Ooh. Ooh. This book is so good. Well, the parts that I've read so far. Um, I think a lot more spiritual people should read this book. It kind of help you. It's kind of like a helping guide to help you through success. So that you can maintain your faith with God. And also not feel guilty about where God is trying to take you. God don't want none of us to struggle. So if somebody out there telling you that God wants you to struggle, that's a lie. Or trying to make you feel bad because you choose to follow God and he's taking you to a level where you can afford things that you wasn't before or do things you wasn't before or get to the school or whatever that you've always dreamed of. Whatever your dream is, and God help you get there and whatever else comes along with it this book I feel like it just helps you uh, not let people guilt you into missing out on your blessing and also helps you navigate through the secular world and keeping your faith so good good book so far I tell y'all, um, 
I keep y'all on track while I'm at with this book. But yeah, God. And today, we're going to start off with this verse. Uh, here come my child. I told her. And she wanted to be in the video to just let me know. But she didn't. So now she in here hiding. Um, go put on a shirt. Thank you. Um, yeah, my Bible verse. I'm sorry, y'all. She be interrupting me all the time. Knowing that I got a slight case of ADD. And, um, uh... Yeah, I got a slight case of ADD. It's really hard for me to focus sometimes. But I'm working on it because I'm tired of being where I'm at. So I got to focus. And if that means being alone temporarily or, you know, let go of some people that's trying to hold you back. I will do that because when when you're tired, you're tired and you just don't want any setbacks. I've been, I feel like I've been set back long enough and I'm just ready to go, go for it. So the verse of the day comes from 2 Peter um, 1 and 3. It says, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who call us by His own glory and goodness. It's crazy how that kind of just go, ties into the book that I was just talking about. And... and Yeah, it ties in together and it's cool because I didn't even plan that. I really should plan these videos, but I don't. Y'all probably can tell, but I just, I just like to go with the flow, see what comes out. I try my best to, I got translate what I feel God puts on my heart to talk about. So, you know, my translation might be not as perfect, but I'm trying. Like I said, communication has been one of my weakness, so I'm working on it. Um, God, he's, he is everything to me. Um, I've had a hard life. I've struggled most of it. And he always seemed to help me out the in the tough situations. Um, I used to feel like like he didn't listen to me. He didn't hear my prayers and he was okay with me suffering. But then as I got older and more experienced out here in life, I realized that I can say eight, the first 18 years of my life, I couldn't really control that. Those were, I was just living through my parents' mistakes and choices. Um, so I had no, I had no obligation or, I don't know if that's the word I'm trying to say. I don't know, but yeah, I just, I had to deal with it basically because those are their choices, and I wasn't old enough to make my own. But once I got old enough to make my own, I realized God was listening to me the whole time. 
and he was trying to guide me in the direction that I wanted to go while also trying to help me realize my purpose because for a long time I, I never realized what my purpose was, what I was supposed to be doing here. I just floated through life just wondering when I was going to wake up and know what I was supposed to be doing here. I wanted to leave this earth so bad. I just felt miserable. And then, I don't know, God has his ways, but it seemed like right when my mom was about to die, I ended up getting pregnant. Maybe that was God's way of helping me to not give up on life, because I think I would have gave up when my mom passed away. But it's hard, it's difficult. I know. Yeah, like, why would I want to go this route if it's hard? It is hard at first when you first learning how to listen. I can say that at first because so, so many times I was confused on what he was trying to say to me or tell me what my next move to be. I was like, Lord, can you just make it so clear, like super clear, like the not the smartest person on this earth, you know, the not so smart person. If they can figure it out, I should be able to figure it out. And like after that, like those signs was so obvious, it was like it was like he was throwing them in my face. And sometimes when when things get bad, I, I get a little confused. But I'm starting to realize his plan. And, and I am appreciating the ride and trying to learn to go with the flow. Because me, I hate gray areas that is a killer for me like i just like to know all the time like is it this way or is it this way like i don't want to guess and sometimes god will let you guess so you can learn how to use your own brain so if you ever come across that situation again you know how you got out of it last time instead of him just telling you how to get out of it. So, in between those times where he like, forcing me to use my brain to figure out a solution, I be panicking, cause, like I said, I don't like gray areas. It's, tell me this or tell me that. I should have been in the, in the military. I almost went to the Navy. That was another, like, path that God wanted me to go, but I said no. He really wanted me to go to the Army, but I was like, I don't want to go to no Army. What if they have me out there shooting or something like that? So I was like, I'll go to the Navy. But then I didn't even go to the Navy because I was too impatient. That's another thing. Ooh, our patience. We need to learn how to work on them. It's it's killing us because we're too impatient it's killing us but yeah i was too impatient to wait the six months to go off to basic training so i ended up moving in, moving to ohio it's crazy i feel like i would have been more set right now if I would have went to the army like God told me to. I probably wouldn't have to worry about paying student loans to go to school. I have health care. My daughter would have health care. Well, she got health care, but I would have health care. Um, 
I don't know. I would have had more confidence than I have. I'm working on it. Um, I was picked on as a kid, so uh, learning to have confidence as an adult is so hard. And I think that's why um, I think that's why the devil he tries to attack us as kids so that way we'll be broken and when we get to become an adult we will be okay with our brokenness cause not too many adults like to change their ways as they say I'm stuck in my way I'm this age and I'm stuck in my way and I've been doing this for this long so this is all I know and this is what I'm used to and that's what the enemy wants he wants you to be stuck in in that what I'm used to even though you know it's not good for you um, but God has been helping me get out of that want to just do the things that I'm used to because I just don't want the used to stuff. I want something real. I want to be for real happy. I'm working on that too. It's hard trying to be happy with depression. You don't even know why you sad a lot of the times. You just sad. That's how I feel all the time. Like, why am I even sad? I'm just sitting here sad for no reason. But I'm sad. And all I want to do is sleep. And I used to smoke a lot. But as I've been on my journey and building my relationship with God, I haven't been smoking like that. It... I just, I don't know, I guess I'm starting to feel complete, like that hole that was inside of me that I didn't know why it was there, why I was feeling it, it's starting to slowly close up. And so my want to smoke has gone away. It do get scary out here. Ugh, yeah, it's scary. But God has been putting in me the, the tools that I need to keep moving forward. And I feel like as long as I keep doing what he tells me to do, that he got my back. No matter what. Through thick and thin. I'm telling you, because right now I'm pretty thick. <laughs> Through thick and thin, sickness and health. And right now he helping me to get back to get health. And part of that, I feel like it's doing these videos. I was panicking after the accident, not knowing like what I'm gonna do like I can't even walk I couldn't walk without the crutches um and even walking with the crutches still hurt but I live on the second floor so can't take no wheelchair up on no second floor so had to do the crutches very painful. I laid in the bed for a month, only getting up to feed Malia and use the bathroom, take a shower. Other than that, I was just laying in the bed, which wasn't really helping my depression because it just made me not want to do nothing, not want to do my homework not want to eat 
And I just wanted to lay there and sleep. And then I was worried, like, how am I supposed to take care of my daughter? Like, God, I followed you up here. You told me to come up here. I thought I was doing everything right. Like, I took the job. I stayed on the job longer than I wanted to because I really wanted to get another job. <laughs> that job was, it was a bit of, um, I don't know, it's some real labor work for real. Delivering packages. I feel like delivery drivers, like the UPS, FedEx people, Amazon people, they deserve way more money than what they get. Because that job right there, oh my goodness. Especially during the summertime. Summertime makes me feel like nobody should order nothing. Like, I know we need jobs, but it be so hot outside and delivering them package as fast as they want you to be delivering. People was like passing out and stuff like that. So... I probably would have passed out a couple of times, but I always seem to run into some nice people that I was delivering to that gave me uh, Gatorades and little snacks. I was like, oh, this is so nice of y'all to give me this stuff because I was out there sweating. Y'all should have seen the sweat. It was disgusting. It was like, eh. It was nasty. Like, uh, I hate sweating. That job was not for me, but I stuck it out. And then it was like, boom, I had this accident. And everything that I just sacrificed and worked so hard for, it felt like it was slipping through my fingers. And looking at my daughter's face, not knowing, like, how am I going to feed her? Like, I'm stuck in this bed. And how am I going to make sure these bills is paid? Um, can't, can't go to nobody's job. Don't even have a car to get to anybody's job, even if I could. So, just here. And while I was laying in the bed healing... I had the nurses and physical therapists, they came out here and checked up on me, made sure I was healing right, um, made sure I could get up out the bed um, better, which I, out the bed, so they did their job. I just wish that doctor would have let the nurse that I had coming out here um, take my staples out. Cause I really would like to just lay in the tub and relax and some Epsom salt or something like that. But can't take a bath. I can only take showers until I get these staples out. So whenever I can get to the doctor and get these out. Would be lovely. But back to the subject. Worried. Real worried. What I'm going to do. And God was sending people to help me and Malia. And I'm so grateful for those people. This lady, her name is Miss Sheila. Um, she really helped me and Malia out in the beginning. Um, on her off days, she would come and bring us groceries. Uh, which I really appreciate because I didn't have no money and I didn't know what we was going to do. So she brought us groceries and like little stuff that we might have needed around the house like tissue and stuff. And then my therapist, they started bringing me groceries. Um, and give me information to try to help me get some type of income to 
take care of Malia. Even though all the resources that they gave me so far haven't came through, but it was something I tried it. Um, luckily, with me being in school, my refund came, so I'm able to pay for October, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I paid the rent and all the utilities for the month, so we good on that. And we still got food from a little food left over from people donating to us. So we appreciate everyone. I appreciate my neighbor, her taking me to the store or whatever. If I needed to get out she would take me and wouldn't even really ask me for no no money but I would still give her gas money and I just appreciate God sending people in, the, in my time of need to help us because he could have sent nobody and we could have starved and whatever but he sent people, good people, nice people that fed us and everything and now I'm trying to finish healing up so that I can get back on the grind and taking care of my daughter but until I finish healing you know I'm just going to sit here and talk with you guys about these topics that he put in my head um i'm gonna be making some stuff also so you know i don't know if you're gonna be able to follow the videos because it's just gonna be you know like watching me the whole process of cutting out something sewing it together putting the finished touches on it like that real quick video mm, I'm not really good at trying to instruct anybody to do anything just yet so I just do the videos for now until I build up my communication skills <laughs> but I just want to thank y'all for coming and listening to me. I hope that my testimony will help you on your journey. Build, help you to build your relationship. Because we all learn different ways. Um, so what might work for me might not work for you. The way he communicate with me might not be the same way he communicate with you. Me, I love music. I love watching movies. So, I feel like God talks to me the most through movies and music. And also sometimes dreams. But dreams, that's another subject that we going to touch on. But, yeah, I feel like that's how he communicate with me. Um, sometimes those dreams can be tricky. Because you got to kind of like... God love doing things in like metaphorical type way. So... You always got to really think about, like, sometimes he be real literal and sometimes he mean, he showed things to mean another thing. And so sometimes that could be difficult and trying to depict what he is actually saying. But I try to do my best and to hear what he's saying. And if I'm not saying it 
clear enough. Uh, or if I'm not saying it clear enough. If I'm not hearing it clear enough, I'll keep praying to I'm 100% sure on what it is that he want me to do, what choice he want me to make. Um, so, yeah, thank y'all for coming out. Um, I love y'all. Um, i see y'all back here tomorrow. I will tell y'all what tomorrow's topic is, but I didn't bring my phone in. But if you like to join the conversation, you can put your comments below and I'll reply to them. And, you know, share the video, put on your bell ding -a -ling, so you know every time I upload a video. Um, yeah, this is day, what, four of my fasts and working out so 30 days let's see some type of transformation i want to be more toned more focused better at communicating and i want to improve my health and i hope through these videos i'm able to do all four things let's walk this road together and let's do this journey i'm going to sacrifice 30 minutes every day to do something to show you something whatever it is that you might need to move forward let's just keep going forward y'all move forward that's the only way to go you move back you get messed up so move forward Let's get some more sewing going. I got a project coming up. A baby uh, set I'm putting together. Um, so when I get ready to do that one, I record myself doing the whole process so y'all can watch me. And I'm going to make Malia a jacket probably this week. I should be getting the rest of the, the stuff that I need to... Um, do this jacket so y'all stick around watch me if you like to support me you can support my website www.nikkiyug.com Nikki Young please help support we're trying to do some big things over here and show y'all some things it's possible all things is possible through Christ. And I believe in that that little statement. It ain't even little. I believe in that statement more and more each day. So thank you for tuning in. I see y'all tomorrow. Love y'all. Peace. As my daddy used to say, peace.